Hello everybody, Dan Lucas of Credo here. Welcome to the 50 states and it's 50 states in 50 days video series. And uh, this is day 41 and we're doing, today we're gonna talk about the 41st state admitted to the union, Montana. Montana's beautiful. Uh, been out there several times. I, have, I actually got myself a really nice, authentic cowboy hat there and very, very proud of it. It's a real hat um, for real men who uh, wear purple shirts. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Does um, no, I'm going to have to get a different shirt from Montana <clears throat> next time. Anyway, um, Montana was admitted to the Union on November 8, 1889, only six days after North and South Dakota got admitted. So uh, well, it looks like kind of a kind of a state edition binge there for the country. It was kind of a long gap after Colorado in 1876 and then 1880, November 1889, it was like bam, bam, bam. So no, November of 1889, three states we added to the Union, right? Two of them were added on the same day as twins, North and South Dakota, so. Anyway, a lot going on that month. A lot going on that week, actually, because it was only six days after North and South Dakota. <laughs> but in any case, um, that's just a little history trivia. This is not a history video. So let's talk about tax incentives, tax credits. Um, Montana has a nice package. Um, they don't have an overwhelming list of credits, but they don't have a underwhelming uh, list of credits. So I want to read off the types of credits they have. And then I'm going to go back and talk about some of the credits that may not be sort of intuitive based on the name of it, or um, I think requires some more commentary, or maybe have federal credits involved in it. We can talk about how those are related. But suffice to say, I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about some of the credits that I feel like um, would be good relevant information for you. But I also want you to not just because I don't go talk about it more in detail doesn't mean that you shouldn't go get it. I just think it means that if, you know, if it's something that kind of bends your ear when you hear it, um, you should look into it. And I don't think if it doesn't bend your ear, it's probably not worth going into. Okay. All right. So um, in alphabetical order, there you have the state of Montana has a adoption credit, they have an alternative energy production credit, they have an alternative energy system credit, they have an alternative fuel conversion credit, they have an apprenticeship tax credit, they have a biodiesel blending and storage credit, they have a college contribution credit, they have a contractor's gross receipt credit, they have a dependent care assistance credit, they have an elderly care credit, they have an emergency lodging credit, an empowerment zone credit, an energy conservation installation deduction, an energy conservation investment deduction, geothermal system credit, historic buildings preservation credit, infrastructure user fee credit, innovate, innovative education program credit, insurance for uninsured Montan insurance for uninsured Montanans credit. Montanans, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. They probably wear hats and not purple shirts. Mineral and coal exploration incentive credit, Montana Economic Development Industry Advancement Tax Credit, Montana Elderly Home Care Renter Credit Program, New or Expanded Industry Credit, Qualified Endowment Credit, Recycling Credit, Student Scholarship Organization Credit, and the Unlocking Public Lands Credit. Whew. So, like I said, believe it or not, a lot of states have way longer lists than that. Um, that's not necessarily a good thing, though. It could just be that they have so many things wrapped up in bureaucracy, and, and instead of, like, canceling credits and redoing a better program, they just keep adding things. And so it's kind of like, it's kind of like you know, uh, you never throw anything away in your house. You keep buying new things and just shoving things into a closet. So Montana's, to me, looks kind of clean, okay? Good, clean and, and intentional. So that's a good thing. Um so let's, uh, you know, one comment is a lot of energy credits in Colorado, right? A lot of energy credits. So um, we can go into some of these, but suffice to say, if you're really interested in this area, you probably want to look at this stuff or send us some questions. We can look at some stuff specifically for you. Um, you know, a lot of these are, they have so many different ones in Montana related to energy, you know, most people, from my experience, 
they know if they're in the energy space or not, or they know that they're doing something, right? It's, it's like they'll say, hey, I, I've got this, uh, you know, I bought this um, piece of equipment and, you know, it uses efficient, you know, alternative fuel or, or uses biodiesel or something like that. I don't know. Um, and they're looking for these types of credits. Or it could be that they need to buy something and they're considering, you know, using alternative fuel and they don't know if there's an incentive or not. And maybe knowing about the incentive would help them make their decision. So anyway, um, if you're in that area, you're going to want to be looking at these and know that there are some available. Let's talk about the apprenticeship tax credit. I love apprenticeship programs. I think it's a lost art. Uh, I wish we would go back to doing more of it. I think part of the reason that some of the younger people in our country are struggling so much is that they're, they're just not getting apprenticeship and mentoring, okay? They can only learn so much uh, in school and um, they need they need uh, older people to kind of step in and mentor and, and help them. Um, and uh, I think it's a responsibility of, of people like us to, to help them, and, and but it's a responsibility for them to engage and have the right attitude and be willing to, to kind of do anything to get there, right? So it has to be the right person. Um, but I think anybody that's trying to facilitate these kind of programs, I just think it's great, right? So so huge props, huge hands up to the states that are doing it, okay? I, you know, not, not a majority of states are doing apprenticeship programs, but there's quite a few. <clears throat> so um, bravo to uh, Montana. So let's see. So uh, you have to first uh, register with the state. So you're going to want to call up the state, uh, ask about the uh, apprenticeship program. Montana actually has a separate uh, division called the Montana Registered Apprenticeship Unit that you can talk to. And you want to get registered with the state for the program, right? You're going to have access to younger people interested in apprenticeship programs. So right off the bat, you know you have somebody with the mentality that sees value in apprenticeship. That's a good thing, uh, in my opinion. And you're also going to be on a list of people that are, you know, have been vetted by the state um, as part of this program. And so you're going to get more exposure to talent, right, to recruits. Um, here's some benefits, right? So I think the benefits of an apprenticeship program are way beyond tax credits and tax incentives. I think this is just gravy. The tax incentives and tax credits is gravy. Um, but the benefit... You know, the monetary benefit is you get $750 for each new registered apprentice or $1,500 for each new registered apprentice who is a veteran. So they don't have to be young to be an apprentice. They have to just be in the program, maybe wanting to be interested in the industry or they're coming out of the military and now they're trying to get you know into the private sector. Um, so it's more of somebody that lacks experience, not necessarily young. It's just that oftentimes people that lack experience are young. And that's why I was referring to it that way, but... It don't have to be. Um, anyway, so the the it has to be uh, the credit has to be claimed in the year it's approved by uh, the the state. So the uh, it says the DLI. I'm not sure what that stands for. I'm assuming that's the division that see, division of yeah. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it has to be approved or, or once it's approved, once your tax credit's approved for whatever apprentice it's related to, um, you have to you have to claim it in that year okay let's see uh here here's the unfortunate thing it is a non-refundable credit and it cannot be carried forward or backwards so you have to be able to use it in the year you do it right so i'm not saying you shouldn't have an apprentice if you can't claim it in that year because like i said there's a lot more benefits potentially but if if you get the credit and you can't use it in that year for whatever reason because you don't owe any montana tax or you have other credits and you've already uh extinguish your Montana tax liabilities, um, you won't be able to use it. So just know that. Uh, let's see. Oh, the DLI is the Department of Labor and Industry, the Workforce Services Division. So there we go. And they have a lot of they have a lot of great resources on this. I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to be involved in this program. I mean, you don't, you're not forced to hire anybody. But if you can get into it, you're going to have access to new recruits. You're going to get exposure. Um, you can see other people that are in the program, like community type thing. Um, I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't do that. Let's see. College contribution credit uh, is what it sounds like. If you're contributing to college savings fund, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're not missing that credit. Let's see. A lot, a lot of things in dependent care, elderly care. Um, you know, if you have a parent, and obviously if you're developing real estate in that area or investing in that area as a partnership, whatever, you want to be looking at that to make sure you're getting some credits there that you might miss. 
uh, or if you have a parent or relative that would qualify for, um, you know, dependent care or elderly care, you want to make sure you're not missing something there. Uh, the empowerment zone credit, so they've got, you know, just federal has enterprise zones where you can get certain benefits for investing in and operating in some of these specific zones uh, that they have kind of mapped out in geography. Uh, Montana has the empowerment zones as well. So um, you're going to want to be looking at, at that and, well, everybody should look at that and see if they're in one. Okay, so, and, they're, and it could be different, right? So you've got federal enterprise zones and you've got state empowerment zones or state of Montana. Look at both maps. If you're in one of those zones, chances are you're missing out on credits and you just didn't know. Um, it's okay, most people don't. But take a minute, look at the maps, you know, take your, wherever you are, put a pin on the map and see if you're in one of these zones, okay? You might be in federal and not in Montana empowerment zone. You might be in the state one and not the federal one. So look at, okay, if you're in it, then you have to research and see what you might be missing. If you're not, then don't worry about it. All right, um, let's see. Historic buildings preservation credit. Yeah, this is not an atypical credit. Um, you know, it's a sort. Of, it could be a monument. Um, could be, um, you know, uh, industrial. Not industrial, but it could be a commercial. You know, building. Uh, could be even something related to agriculture. Um, it has to be historic, though, of course. But you know, sometimes you'll see. Oh, this was a. You know, this was an old barn owned by you know the first governor of Montana or something um, and so it's considered a historic building right so a lot of times it's not uh, a mystery as to what historic buildings are but um, if you're in one or, or whatever and, and you happen to not know that you can get some benefits from it I mean a lot of times it, it's just uh, not necessarily that you bought it but that you're keeping it up right they want you to keep it up and they're gonna give you incentives and credits to do that right because uh, it's good for preserving history right and we don't want to just let all of our historic buildings go uh, go bad, right? So, uh, just something to look at. If you think typically people know whether they are or not, you know, doing something in this area. But what a lot of people don't know sometimes is just keeping it up and the maintenance allows you to get credits, not necessarily just buying and buying things. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. We've got. Mineral and coal exploration, so I mean, yeah, that's very specific to a certain industry. But a lot of people invest in those kind of partnerships, right? It could be a you could be a limited partner in some uh, private investment and uh, not getting credits, you know. And and you know, a lot of people that sort of run these investments or, or run these types of ventures, they don't know about this stuff either, right? And the tax pros are not telling them about it. It's very common. It's not that somebody's messing up. It's just can't keep track of everything. That's a lot of reason why I'm doing these videos is to get this awareness out there. Um, because I see that it's been hard for people to keep up with. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's look at the, the Montana Economic Development Industry Advancement Tax Credit, MEDIA, right? So MEDIA acronym is the acronym. Oh, uh, let's see. So let's see. It is, uh, so, so it's a, it is what it sounds like. It's like a, they call it like a film and entertainment credit or, or film and video credit in other states a lot of times. Uh, this is becoming very common now that states are giving incentives for video and film production. And it's not just the actual like taping of the, of the video. A lot of people think that it can be pre-production, it can be post-production work, right? So anything, it could be digital media content, it could be, it could be advertisements. It doesn't have to be long. It could be a minute video, okay? And so if you're doing this kind of stuff, you may want to look at this if you're doing a lot of it. If you're not doing a lot of it, it might not be worth it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it or, or if, you know, you might have uh, an agency that is involved in product, you know, post-production or design and uh, you get involved in this, okay? So um, a lot of people are, are in this kind of supply chain of digital uh, video content um, for many different purposes and don't realize it, right? So if you think you might be involved in this, it might be something to look at. Let's see, they've got, oh, every year, the state of Montana sets aside an amount for credits for this program and they cap it, right? So you have to make sure, this is one of those like early bird gets the worm. So you can qualify for these credits, but if they run out of money, you uh, could, could be left holding the bag, could be like musical chairs. So 
if you think you're eligible for this, get on it quick, right? Um, and, you know, sometimes you don't know. I mean, they could have, it could be that they have plenty. They could have a surplus of credits available, and they could have uh, still credits available from prior years, right? And you can go back to prior years and get some credits uh, if you didn't realize that you um, didn't get them, right? It's, it's really simple as to, uh, it's as simple as just filing an amended return, and uh, state state amended returns are, are a lot easier than federal. That's not a big deal. It's done all the time. Uh, let's see. For 2021, they have $10 million of credit reserves, so that's a ton. Um, let's see. Yeah. That probably sums it up. I don't need to go into that anymore. Let's go back to our list. Um, let's see, we've got newer expanded industry credit. Let's look at that real quick. That one's pretty vague. All right, so eligibility for this is manufacturing companies which increase total full-time employment by at least 30%. So, I believe, and, that, and I would assume that means full-time equivalent, so that means like two part-time people, two part-time people equal like a full-time person. Um, but if you're increasing... Yeah, I guess you have to increase your headcount by 30%. The benefit is 1% of total wages paid to new employees. Credits available for the first three years after initiation. So, oh cool, so you can, it's actually an ongoing credit. So 1% of total wages may not sound like a lot, but when you're talking about state income tax credit or state taxes, um, you know, let's, if you have a million dollar payroll, that's, what? what is that, it's 10 grand. And so, you know, your Montana tax levy might be 10 grand, right? It might knock the whole thing out. So it may not sound like a lot, but a lot of times it can be. Um, it can't be carried forward or backward. So sometimes this credit can knock, like I said, it can knock out all of your, um, all of your tax liability. And then we were talking about some of those other credits that you can't carry forward either. And that's why I'd say you may, you know, if you're doing an apprenticeship program, let's say, um, if you want to get the credits from an apprenticeship program, but know that you're not going to pay state income tax that year, you might want to hire those people effective January 1st of the next year, right? And then try to get the credits for the next year. So it's just some tax planning stuff you can do as well. So that's why you have to look at some of the fine print on these things. All right. Um, let's see. Cycling credit, student scholarship, or let's look at this. Student scholarship organization credit. This is the last one we're going to look at. Uh, so eligibility, individuals, corporations, partnerships, small business corporations, trusts, or estates with qualifying donations. So you're making donations to student scholarship organizations. Wow. And they're giving, the, they're giving the credits a lot of different, uh, kind of entities or, or participants in that respect. Trust in estates. Wow. There's a, that just puts a big pool of money in play for this, um, to make these donations. The credit is equal to the amount of the donation up to 150. Credits are available on a first come first serve basis until the total credits claimed reaches the threshold for the year. So again, this is one of those where they kind of carve out an amount of credit and then once it's used up, it's used up. Uh, again, the credit's non-refundable, meaning that you can only use it against taxes. They're not gonna give you a, you know, a tax refund if you go beyond zero taxes owed. And it can't be carried forward. So, and again, you're going to have to, if you want to get this donation, you're going to have to plan and make sure that you can actually use it in the year that you get credit. Um, this is not a huge credit. I don't know. And 150 is not that big a deal. So, I don't know. It, this could be where they're trying to get a lot of different people involved and not just uh, kind of put it out there for wealthy people. But, I don't know. It seems like if you want to do a good deed for the day, put $150 into it, you get a tax credit of an equal amount. It doesn't really cost you anything on a net basis at least I don't think you know in general um, all right so Montana um, I would say that if I'm going to sum up Montana as far as sort of the uh, maybe kind of the the, <laughs> the cork the quirks of it would be that they don't have a, you know they're not uh, allowing credits to be refundable which means that, and a lot of states do actually, which means that if you don't owe the tax liability, then you can't get the benefit, right? So sometimes if you have zero tax liability and you have a refundable credit, they'll send you a check for that amount. 
Okay, it's like a, a re, you get it's like a tax refund. Okay, so those are really neat. Um, they're not doing that in Montana. They're also not allowing carry forwards. Um, so a lot of times, if you know, let's say you do the apprenticeship program, and you've already knocked out your tax liability, and you hire a veteran, and you get fifteen hundred dollar tax credit. A lot of times, you know, that tax credit goes on your Montana return and it shows that it's disallowed for the year because you've already used up or because you have no tax liability after whatever else you've done. And then it marks it as a carry forward to next year. That's common. In Montana, no. So you have to plan for these credits if you want to get them to make sure you can actually use them uh, in that year. So little tax planning tip on that but anyway if you need help with this um you know there's lots of things you can go into with these videos i can't go into everything it would take hours to really go into everything in detail but if you have questions about anything you heard comments please uh put a comment in the video send us a note go to credofinance.com send us a general email refer to this video and just say what your question is or if you want more information on something we're happy to help you um, we're trying to get information out there and we're trying to build awareness so uh let us know and uh have a great day.